you want to make sure you're investing in the right water filtration equipment for your family. So you've gone out, you've paid the big bucks, and you've had a water analysis done. But how do you read this thing? What numbers should you be looking for? Are some columns more important than other columns? Uh, where do you go from here? Well, I'm going to explain it all to you, and I'm going to explain to you what's most important for your family starting right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. So this video is for the do-it-yourselfer, the homeowner, the plumber, the water filtration specialist that wants to make sure you get the right equipment to solve whatever concerns you about your water. A water analysis is a great place to start, but once you get that water analysis, what are you going to do with it? That's what we're talking about here today. So there's many different kinds of water analyses out there. Uh, everything from a basic one, which just tests the, the hardness, the iron, the total dissolved solids, the pH of the water, to a full-blown um, analysis done like this by a licensed lab. When do you do, which one do you need? Well, it really depends. Uh, if you're on a municipal water system, then you just need a basic test. If you're on well water, but um, you get the basic test done, and, and everything seems to be pretty much in line, then, then that, that's all you need. But if you've got a, a major problem with your water or your area is super high uh, total dissolved solids, a super high mineral content, a high sodium, a nitrates, nitrites, things like that in the water, uh, or you're in a farming community, it's definitely a good idea to have a full um, licensed lab water analysis done. So most licensed labs do have what they call a full well water analysis, so often you can just tie into that. But if there's specifics in your area, make sure you're addressing those. But whatever you do, make sure you have the water tested for bacteria, because that's the most important. Um, bacteria is going to make your family sick, and, uh, and you want to make sure that uh, you definitely have that done. So here's a good example of what you might get from a licensed lab. And uh, so definitely check the headings across the top. And the result, that's, that's the test results from your sample. Um, but the units of measure, we're going to be talking about that in a second, why that's important. MAC, what, what does that mean? Aesthetic objective, well, that's pretty obvious. And then date analyzed. But let's delve a little bit deeper into each one of those headings. All right, firstly, let's look at MAC, or Maximum Allowable Concentration. So this column tells you what the levels um, you, uh, your sample cannot exceed. If your water exceeds those levels, it isn't safe to drink. So <laughs> pay special attention to that. The next one is AO, or Aesthetic uh, Objective, or Guideline. And uh, so some contaminants aren't dangerous, but do to give you undesirable characteristics. So things like tannins. Um, tannins in themselves aren't dangerous. Uh, level of hardness, things like that. But they're definitely objectionable and it's definitely something that you may uh, want to get rid of. If you don't, you need to be aware of at least uh, where you are on those things. And of course, results. Now, results can be called something different. Each, each lab has different test results. We'll, we'll show you some different examples here so you can see uh, how they range from one lab to the other. But that's really uh, what you're interested in learning more about. And then the units. So the units are important. So one of the, one of the, the classic ones is hardness. Most uh, labs test hardness in parts per million or UG over L, which is uh, uh, grams per liter, etc. So, so the units, you need to be able to convert them back and forth. So parts per million, if, if you want to get uh, grains per gallon for hardness, because that's the most common units that we use and most water softeners are programmed that way, if you just divide it the parts per million number by 17 and that gives you the grains per gallon of hardness. And the same for things like iron test, etc., is that you want that in parts per million. So if your sample is in parts per billion, then you'll need to convert it. And again, this is the conversion factor that you would use. All right, so let's look at some examples here from some different labs. And uh, so th this, is a, this is a good example from a lab that someone submitted. So what I like best about this one is it has the bacteria testing right across the top because, again, that's always the most important test that we have done. And some labs, that's an option. So you need to specify that when you're asking the lab to do the testing for you. And, uh, and then you can see the results as it goes down through. Now in this one here, nothing's highlighted, nothing's in bold print, etc. So again, you have to be able to figure out how to, um, how to interpret these results to see what's important for you. And by the way, if, you have any, if you're not sure about your results, you can just email them to me. I can check them out for you and then from there make a recommendation. So, uh, all right. 
So here's another one. Uh, this is actually the one that we briefly look at, looked at earlier. And uh, so you can see this one's a little bit better because they've highlighted, you see where it goes down to sodium. Uh, you can see that they've highlighted um, that the sodium content is 202, the result. But if you go a couple columns over to aesthetic objective, it shows that it's 200. Now, I don't know about aesthetic ob objective. So drinking water standard for sodium, for example, is 200 uh, parts per million. However, <laughs> sodium reduced diet is only 20 parts per million. So uh, having a sodium uh, content in your water of 202 parts per million, I'd say is very, very high. So I think it's a little bit more than uh, aesthetic objective. So uh, again, let's have a look at another one here. And uh, so again, this is another one here that uh, shows you some different uh, results. And again, there's not a lot of detail on this one, but it does show the result being RL. It does show the, the maximum acceptable concentration. You can see the legend at the bottom of, of it, and you can see the AO, the uh, aesthetic objective. And uh, so, oh, sorry here. Um, again, I misread this. So you see the RL isn't the result. At the far right hand column is the result. So the RL is reporting limit. So again, you have to kind of look at these things. And another one here. So the, what I like about this one is that at least they've highlighted some of the areas that are of immediate concern. And, uh, and that's what uh, you, sh you should be uh, tuning into. So again, you can see the, the reporting detection limit. You can see the units. You can see the guideline or standard. And then you can see the result. And you can see they've put them in bold. They've got the total hardness in bold. They've got the chlorides in bold. And, uh, and again, they've got the sodium in bold. Now, what I like about this one in particular is that they give you some more information. They actually tell you the, the possible source of, of some of the concerns, but it also tells you the health effects. So again, for iron, it's showing that uh, you're getting 0.8 uh, parts per million. So they use this other column to the left of possible source. So that's the recommended standard. Again, they don't spell that out very well for you, but it also talks about the health effects. And it talks about things like manganese on here. It shows the pH, shows what's a good range, uh, TDS or total dissolved solids, etc. And it goes down the list. And at the bottom, it talks a little bit about the hardness range and uh, what is soft, what was slightly hard, what's hard and what's very hard. Anything over 10 grains per gallon is classified as very hard. And uh, so again, great information there. Here's another one that doesn't have a lot of interpretation here, but I'm going to show you what do you do when you get a result like this. So you can see the sample result, you can see the suggested maximum, and there's some information in the comments down the right hand side. And, uh, but like I say, we want to uh, get a little bit more. So once you get this, the, the first step that you're going to take is you're going to do this. You're going to highlight the, the, the basic, the items from the basic test, because you just want to see where the parameters are. So again, with this one, you can see that uh, the iron is, um, is below the su suggested maximum. Uh, suggested maximum is 0.3, and uh, it's uh, 0.195. And then you can see the pH is 7.49, and again, it's below 8.5, so that's good. Total hardness. They're showing at 656, and they're showing su suggested maximum is 500. Well, <laughs> in the one we saw just before that, it was showing that uh, 10 grains per gallon or 170 parts per million is classified as very hard. So you can see uh, 500 is extremely hard, and 656 is a lot harder than that. So definitely we have to do something about that. But then look at the last one, the TDS or total dissolved solids. So it's coming in, the suggested maximum is 500 parts per million, which is drinking water standard. But this one came in at over 2,000. So that's four times drinking water standard. So definitely there's a big problem here. And, uh, and we need to delve a little bit deeper to find out what those problems are. And if you look at uh, some of the other parameters, you can see what it is. So again, this is the first thing that you would do is you would highlight those four areas and then delve a little bit deeper. So then once we delve a little bit deeper and we start uh, looking at what other results are above the suggested maximum, then we start to see things uh, like the alkalinity, the bicarbonate, um, and as we look down further, even the calcium is high. Uh, we talked about the sodium. Um, so no, no, sorry, we didn't talk about the sodium. So you can see the sodium here is 500 parts per million. Again, their suggested maximum is 100. Sodium reduced diet is only 20, so you can see this is super, super high. Uh, sodium absorption ratio, um, it's the water's likely to inhibit plant growth. 
So again, if, if that's a, a big concern for you or if you're just looking at drinking water, but obviously the sodium co uh, content here is uh, super high. And then we can see sulfates. You know, sulfates are four or five times um, what the suggested maximum is. So we definitely need to do something about that. So again, if you get a water test analysis like this, then this is not something you're just going to buy a water softener and you're done. This is something that you need to email that to us email that to me, info at waterestore.com or info at waterstoremidland.com and then I can further interpret uh, what you need here. So what does this, this family need? Well, they definitely need a water softener. Uh, I always suggest you have something for bacteria if you're on well water to make sure, like an ultraviolet disinfection system, to make sure your water is bacteria free. But they really need reverse osmosis. So now whether they want to pay the big bucks and go with a whole house reverse osmosis system or go with a couple smaller, um, point of use uh, reverse osmosis systems. That's uh, something that's open for discussion um, with the homeowner and the family, of course. So I found a great website from the province of Alberta that interprets your uh, water analysis from the licensed lab. So I've got a link in the description down below. You just hit, click that link and then put the information that you have from your, uh, your results, from your water analysis, from the licensed lab into that website and it interprets that and it tells you which items are a huge concern, which items make your water unsafe, but also tells you some of the aesthetic objectives and that of some of the different parameters. You definitely want to check that out. A lot of great information there. If you're still not sure what to do after you get your water analysis done, no problem. You can email it to me, info at waterestore.com, and I can check it out for you and then make some recommendations for equipment to... Uh, to fix your water uh, once and for all. If you want a basic test done, we don't uh, charge for that. So just send us about 500 milliliters of water in a plastic container, leave some air in it in case it's the winter time, you don't want it to freeze and burst the container. Just um, mail it to our uh, mailing address. I've got it in the description down below and we can test that for you. So it was a great decision to have your water analyzed before investing in any water filtration equipment for your family. That way you'll do it right the first time. Click over here for your next video on water filtration and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments, just add them down below. I read them all and I'd love to answer yours.